what to do when you need a good knife you know so i hate reaching in my pocket for a folder and they're so dangerous they're so cheap the nra sent me one and i had it for like two weeks the last one and the pins came out of it they fall apart uh some of them the lock fails and opens up so then you got a dangerous knife i like a fixed blade like you know i keep my leather man here i surely you know this thing's a big honking super tool i sure wouldn't want to be you know picking in to have this in my pocket all day so you know they come with a holster these holsters wear out and i've made several fixed blade knives but the problem is i lose a lot of them and um, here, the deal is, is that, um, uh, you know, and now it's got a handle sticking up. I've made them with a handle and all that. Well, I thought, uh, a buddy of mine who's a farmer, his son does leather work. And he said, well, I'll show you a holster that works. You know, I'll make a holster. And he was wearing one where the knives don't fall out. And then I, my forge is broke, my electric 12 volt motor on my, my blowers broke okay i gotta replace that so i i couldn't pound one out usually i'll make them out of a file or some hardened steel and um you know i got all these disc mower blades and i thought i wonder if you can make a, a knife out of these they're they're a low carbon steel uh or well mid-grade i mean they're made to hit something and not get too brittle but they they gotta be a little bit higher quality than just low carbon steel so there's some i'm sure there's some carbon added i looked up on the internet about lawnmower blades and you know blacksmiths a lot of them recommend against making a knife because most guys are going to heat treat this thing you know harden it afterwards and then temper out to a certain temper so you got some ductility on the edge but they said, well, if you harden them, they could, you know, you don't know what it is and how to harden it. It might shatter and become dangerous. So, you know, I did, I just ground on this and my two by 72 inch belt sander. Uh, I got the good zirconium metal working belts. I started with the 36 grit and then I had an 80 grit. And then I think I ended up with a 150 J flex belt and then I just sharpened it on a stone um it's a little bit hard to get like a, I didn't get a feather on this you know that you get on really good steel but you know I I don't know I just stumbled on this because why do you need that big handle the handles just fluff really I mean sure I found an antler the other day I go oh that'd be nice and if my forge was working I probably would have pounded out a little bit longer handle but I never would have kind of found this out. So I've got a hook for my finger. I made a little indent here for my thumb and for this finger. This, there's not really an edge. There's no sharpened edge right here in case my finger slipped. Really the cutting edge is here. And what do you really need the belly for on a utility knife? I mean, so the handle and that big belly, think about it. Most of the time you're just, you're touching, you know, with the tip and uh we're just below the tip here so it hangs on the uh hangs on the nail pretty good i i went back and kept grinding you know got it shaped hollow grounded you know hollow ground that edge out a little bit there and uh i got an edge now i mean it'll just start to grab hair to you know which, you know, you don't need them here. Oh, look at that, see? You don't need them, you know, on your average farm utility knife. But it's just from a disc blade, my, my New Holland disc mower, you know? So, so you know, I might have stumbled on a pretty decent uh, utility knife. I mean, why, you know, because I'm not going to go spend most of us don't go spend money on a good kershaw or sog blade because we end up losing the damn thing you know and then you get these cheap 20 dollar folders say smith and wesson on them or something whichever 
you know, Smith & Wesson's putting their name on a knife that you buy at TSE or something, it ought to at least be of quality. They're junk. They fall apart, and I think they're dangerous. And the thing is, lavas don't, though, like being, you know, don't like carrying a big, you know, knife with a big handle. Gouges in, it's in the way. But this, I tell you what, and I, I stumble across this sheath, and it's almost like, um, it's almost like a concealed carry holster, you know, the way he built this, you know. These, you got to watch the Leatherman ones. They they wear out that flimsy leather, and then you lose a, it's a $100 tool. And if I figure I need a really sharp knife, I save, I reserve the Leatherman knife. I'm a Leatherman for fine cutting because I don't want to, I want to keep, they, they got really nice knives. Made in the USA, made in Oregon. And then I, I discovered I'm a leather man. This is the best thing I found for cutting net wrap or twine on a round bale. I had the version that was like a couple models down from this and this, the blade was chintzy and it broke. I took it back to tractor supply and they just gave me a new, I upgraded too. I go, I want to upgrade to the super tool. Is this what I really like? Uh, but yeah, you're you're around the hundred dollar range now for a good leather man super tool.